So I think I'm going to take a little bit different approach here on these restoration videos. I'm going to probably try to split these into multiple parts and go into much more detail and also make it more of a real-time uh, teardown and restoration. Uh, because the, the last couple of ones I've done, it's been, you know, probably seven, six hours of video that I've been compressing down to ten minutes. And I figure there's probably people out there that are interested and seeing some of the stuff that I don't actually post. So what we have here today is actually a fine tapper, automatic tapper. And the first thing you'll notice is this is actually a metal case. No pl there's no plastic here. In this case, this handle is plastic. It was like up to here it's plastic, but everything else is metal here don't really have that much information on this unit. It probably predates all of the electronic documentation that Fine has. But there's similar units out there that, that they do have documentation on, so I expect the insides to look very similar. So I picked up this unit for a pretty, pretty good deal. The only thing that was missing was the handle. And this thing weighs about, I'd say about 10 pounds. So it's definitely not a light unit. So here's the nameplate information. The model is an ASG 658, 540 watts, and it has a tapping capacity of uh, M16. So the way these tappers work is when you don't have any pressure exerted on this shaft, it will actually spin in a counterclockwise motion, like you're backing out a tap. As soon as you put pressure on here, it starts spinning in a clockwise motion. You can back the tap out by just releasing pressure on the shaft, and then when you're ready to, to start tapping again, you just push up against the piece that you're working on. So I'll plug it in and I'll show you guys, kind of do, do a little quick demonstration on how that works. So if you just push on this a little bit, it actually goes into like a neutral gear where it's free spinning. So I'll go ahead and start in that just to show you. So as soon as I push it in, it'll actually engage that tapping gear. And you can see there, as soon as I let it go, it starts spinning in the counterclockwise position. The drive here to tighten up the jaws it actually looks to be a square drive. I think that's typically some, something you normally see. You would normally expect that to be just a hex drive. So that's kind of unusual. So I'm not really sure how to attack this in terms of tearing it down. So I'm, I think the first thing I'm going to do is take off this this handle cover. Um, because I doubt there's anything attached to it, and it'll give us a look inside, see what's see what's going on in there. All right, so we can definitely see the original paint was uh, this orange color. I'm not really sure what this hole is for, because there's nothing else in this compartment here, except for this cover. I wonder if that was maybe for some kind of attachment that went on there. But it doesn't look like we can see much of anything in there. So it looks like the screws are labeled RIBE. Now there is a drive type called RIBE, but that's definitely not it, because um, the RIBE has some splines on the corners. So it must be just a brand a brand name. Alright, next thing I think I'll try is to take off these uh, these feel like plastic uh, vents. And there's just some slotted screws in there. So it looks like we got a, a spring here. 
and it's actually melted into the plastic. So that's kind of interesting. And it looks like what that spring is for is to actually push in on this, which looks like the brush holder. So let's see if we can pull that out. All right. So looks like we got quite a bit of uh, carved brush left on there, so that's good. Go ahead and uh, do the same here on the other side. So the next thing I think I'll tackle is taking off the other side with the handle. All right, so it looks like <clears throat> I got to take these the shells off before I can pull that off. So, we'll... Alright, so looking inside here, we have another Markart uh, switch, which seems to be pretty common in, in fine tools. Um, and we got a capacitor, and that's about it here. And this is a pretty heavy duty switch. So, 15 amps. So, that's like way oversized for this tool, considering it. The nameplate has a rated at just 5.4 amps, I think it was. Yep. So, I'm not sure why they picked such a large switch. There must be a huge amount of inrush current when this thing is turned on that the engineers had to decide to, to pick this switch. So we'll go ahead and take these components out and see if we can see any other markings on them. It's in remarkably good condition for its age. I'm guessing this thing is probably pre-1980. But I'll have to take a look. If you check out this attention to detail, they actually tag down all these screws with it doesn't look like thread locker. It actually looks like a what they call torque seal. It's an anti-tamper. Um, so you know if anybody's actually been in here, taking this apart, and as you can see, they're all still intact. So, and the capacitor, what does that say? 0 0.1 microfarad. There's no, don't look like any date codes or anything on there. So that's that was probably our best bet was the switch, if we could find a date code. But hope maybe we might find something inside. Okay. Yeah, it looks actually like there is a a rubber membrane in there on that switch. It's a little bit dried out, but it's still intact. So I don't think I'm going to actually take the switch apart. I'm just going to unscrew the leads. And I don't think any work needs to be done on this switch actually at all. And they got ferrules on the ends of these. So this was a pretty top-notch design here. Definitely built for everyday. This was definitely built for something that was going to be used all the time. We also got some nice brass threaded inserts here in these plastic pieces, and those self tapping screws here. And then we just got a, a little plastic grommet here for the power wires. So that's actually a really nice design, how they separated out most of the electrical components physically from the, from the motor components and the brushes. Uh, so that's what this other thing is for. 
So you could basically you could basically put the handle on either side. All you need to do is take it apart and push this to this side. That's actually a really cool design there. All right, so now we need to figure out how to get the rest of this apart. So there's two large slotted screws here and there's two socket caps here and then another slotted here and then this is actually a brass um, access for the grease I guess so you could check the grease level or add new grease we'll just leave that on for now so I'm thinking that first I'll try taking these out so those definitely short screws with a with a Nord lock washer. All right, so all that did, everything must go out this way because nothing really budged there. It just basically it was the attachment for this assembly right here. So I guess we'll. We'll try the other end here. Let's see what we get. All right, so it's definitely the grease compartment it has these screws going right through it. So you can definitely tell this thing hasn't been taken apart since it was painted because we're actually breaking that that paint seal there but the grease actually doesn't look too bad all right all right we're in all right time to put the gloves on gonna get messy so definitely got some things in here I haven't seen before and that's an interesting piece there four screws out and try to get into the, the body So hopefully this will come right out. Come on. Oof. Wow, look at that thing. This thing is old. All right, so slide that out. We got some interesting things going on here before I take this apart even further. You look in there, that right there is the brush holder. And you can see that there's a looks like a copper wire wound around it. So that must be how they're making that electrical connection there. And it looks like there's some a piece of frayed wire up in there. Let me check the other side. 
Yeah, we kind of see the same thing. So I'm not sure if that is normal. Wouldn't think so because there is insulation on it. Actually, it looks like you're going to have to take these out before you pull the field windings out because. So let's see if we can get in here with a screwdriver. Pipes will go on this side. So we got that side up. All right, so try with some. There we go. Oh, that's interesting. How one is like. It's interesting how one is tarnished a lot more than the other. The other one has a coating on it. The other doesn't. This looks like we got two bolts right there. To take out the field windings. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Alright, so it looks like we got some some tabs here. Kind of a strange shape for a washer. All right, so now we should be able to slide this out. Looks like we got to get this, somehow get this through the hole before we put that in there. I think the only way to do that is to bend them in half. That's why they made that hole so big. All right. So now we should be able to slide it out. Hmm. So that's actually rather interesting. This says DSK 658. Now there is a DSK model that fine makes but it's not a tapper it's actually a drill so they must have reused the same field windings but this is also interesting how this is resined somebody actually tied this in a knot and then it went while it was being while it was dipped in resin it's in a remarkably good condition for its age So yeah, it definitely looks like that wire has been damaged <laughs> quite, a, quite, quite a bit, actually. So might have to yeah, I think we might be able to get some heat shrink around that. Maybe just add a, a dab of solder to to shore it up. Let's look at the other side. And this side's not actually not quite as bad. But still you can definitely see something's been grinding away at that quite a while now. So I was looking for a date code and it looks like we got one there. November 12th, 1972. And there's actually only one one chunk there taken out, so what's interesting here is this piece up here also has some balancing chunks taken out. Yeah, and look, there's actually I think these marks right here are actually balancing marks for this plastic as well. 
So they must have they must have balanced all of these separately. Because normally what you would do is just balance the whole assembly. It's very interesting, yeah. And we got no maker's mark on this bearing at the end of the ar armature here. It's pretty dry though. But I think just a little grease it'll be be just fine. Alright, so I've wiped away most of the grease and there's a quite a few interesting things going on with this this piece. The first thing is it looks like there's a piece here. It might fall out when I was cleaning it out. It just looks like a disc. It looks like but it goes in the bottom of this bronze bushing right here. And you can see there there's actually a cutout down here. So that that bronze right there you can see is actually that bushing. And when you put this in it actually covers that hole up. So I'm not really sure what the purpose of that would be. The other thing I thought it might be is just a way to actually get grease down in this bearing. Over time it'll just leak out a little bit. So that's a pretty interesting feature that they added there. So the other other interesting thing is there's actually a screw here and that's the other end of the screw and it I'm not really sure what the purpose of that that is. I thought it might be a way to adjust the bearing that goes in here, but you can see the screw doesn't even extend past the where the bearing is going to be. So is that possibly another way to grease grease up the the gear the gearbox? And then there's also it looks like some more of that uh, Torx Torx seal, you know, thread locker, whatever you want to call it, right there. So I bet you there's a set screw under there uh, to hold this bushing in place. I don't think I'm going to take that out. So it looks like there's a ball bearing here that has a spring on it. And I really have no idea what that's for. So that might be some kind of grease fitting right there. Because if you look at this this bushing, it's not a normal bushing. There's a there's like a cavity in it. So if you look down in there, there's actually looks like a hole. And I bet you that hole goes out to there. So I don't think I've ever seen a fitting. Either that or the fitting actually broke off. And that's just the remnants of it. But yeah, let me guys know what you think about that. Let's so look inside the gearbox here. And we got the long spring. And you can see here. That's making a weird sound. I think that's just the old grease. See that there's definitely kind of a transmission. So when when you're in the middle here, you can turn the shaft either way. If you go in, you can only turn it in one direction. When you go out, you turn it in the other direction. So we do have a screw here, but I think that's going to be similar to what we saw before on the other side, just basically a screw maybe to grease the axle. <clears throat> yeah. 
All right. So the thing I'm going to do now is try to take this off, this assembly off, off the shaft here. And uh, it looks like we have a, a roll pin up here. And you could tell somebody's beat on it before, so what I think I'll do is I'll go from this side and try to see if that'll pop out. That looks to be in pretty good shape. So let's see if we can. So let's see if we can help it off. Here's that assembly, and I don't think I'm going to take this apart. I think it just really needs a little bit of penetrating oil to get it to run smoother, but it's kind of a, see how it kind of rotates around, pivots. There's a spring in there, I can see it, but I don't think I see any reason really to take this apart. All right, I think I'm going to try to pull some of these gears off. One of these days I need to get an actual you know, bearing or gear puller. But these don't seem like they're in there too tight. All right, so that gear. I can remember how to put this back together. So it looks like you gotta push the whole shaft assembly through here. old grease in there. It looks like a bronze bushing. I think that's going to wrap up this video on the teardown of this unit. So I guess my plan is, is we'll have a part two that's a restoration where I go through and fix everything that needs to be fixed replace everything that needs to be replaced and then I'll have a part three which is actually using the tool so that way some of you guys may not be interested in the restoration part you can just skip to part three so let me know what you think about this new format and I'll see you guys next time